this is the Honda CL500 and in this video I'm going to give it a full review and tell you what this bike is really like. The CL500 is very easy to ride. The clutch is very light thanks to the slipper assist clutch and the gears are silky smooth. So with this bike being A2 compatible, I can imagine a lot of A2 riders will be looking at this bike and perhaps not so many people who've got their full license may be looking at it. Um, but if you are a new rider or a learner rider, this bike would be ideal for you because it's very easy to ride and you can get on with it very simply. Um, so let's go into some more details about the bike. I just had to be a little bit sick because an EcoBoost Mustang went past. I don't know why they put that stupid engine in a Mustang. Um, they should have made a new Ford Capri or Cortina or something like that and put that EcoBoost engine in that. But back to motorbikes, the engine in this CL500 is the same 471cc parallel twin that you see in the uh, CB500X and the Honda Rebel 500, which are the two I've ridden. It is in a couple of other models as well. Um, it's a very good engine. It's very efficient, very reliable, very smooth. One thing it does lack though is character. There is very, very little character with this engine and with this bike in general. But you're probably not looking for character when you're buying this sort of bike. Um, the engine produces 47 horsepower, so right on the cusp of what you can have on an A2 license at 8,500 RPM, and 43 newton meters of torque at 6,000 RPM. So it does like to be revved um, from what I've found. So lower down in the RPMs, it's not as happy, but it can do it very easily. It prefers to be higher up in the RPM range, and that's where you get the most out of it. video is sponsored by Rec Watches. Now, I'm currently wearing this Icon 1000, TTT Icon 1000 watch. It's absolutely stunning. It's the best watch I've ever owned. I'm over the moon with it. Now, if you haven't heard of Rec Watches, they were founded in 2014 in Denmark by two gentlemen who've known each other from childhood, and they've got a passion for everything automotive and everything watches. So they've combined the two and they recycle parts from iconic cars and motorcycles and put them into a timepiece, which is incredible, and they come out amazing. So this TTT Icon 1000 is based on the Icon 1000 Triumph Speedmaster custom build from 2013, which was inspired by 1960s drag bikes. A really, really stunning machine, beautiful motorbike, and a beautiful watch to go alongside it. And you can actually tilt the face of this watch 30 degrees so that you can see it easier when you're riding so you can read the time without having to lift your hand off of the bars and it just really is stunning I mean you can see some of the components underneath working you've got a bit of exposure to the underneath and on the back as well so if you fancy yourself one of these beautiful watches you can get yourself 50 percent off with my code Mr Darcy so if you click the link in the description type in the code you will get this watch for half price and the offer ends on the 31st of this month October 2023 so you don't want to miss out and you can beat the Black Friday rush so head over to there now and grab yourself one before it's too late You've got a single disc brake on the front and the rear. The stopping power is very good, so no problems there. The suspension is really good for the roads we have in England. Lots of potholes and bumps. It soaks them up nicely. You can go over speed bumps pretty quickly as well. So it has got that feel um, to it of a scrambler which is, of course, what it's meant to. But it's definitely more of a road-biased scrambler. So if you do mainly road riding and you think you might 
ever so often want to do uh, go up a little farm track or um, down a gravel path or something like that this would be very capable the tyres it comes with are also very much for the road so I did a little bit of riding on some wet grass and it does just spin the back wheel um, so if you are doing more off-roading I've definitely changed the tyres but if you are doing off -road, more off-roading I'd probably opt for a different bike than this one maybe a Honda 300L C CRF 300L or if you want this sort of scrambler style, then something like a Royal Enfield Himal a Himalayan or Scram. motorway speeds this bike is very enjoyable it feels nice and stable it's got six gears so it's not revving the nuts off of it at 70 miles an hour um, so if you're doing a bit of motorway riding or a roads um, then this is ideal if you're doing a lot of b road riding that's when this bike comes to life um, i found that riding it on the a roads i wasn't getting a lot of enjoyment out of it because it hasn't got a lot of character it doesn't do a lot for you unless you're actually going for it and really leaning into the corners and having a bit of fun with it. Until that point, you don't get the enjoyment out of it. Whereas a bike with character, you can get that enjoyment and that feel um, even chugging along in town. So this doesn't really have that, but once you get into the back roads, it's really fun. And because of the suspension setup, I found it more fun in the back roads than perhaps a Honda Rebel 500 because it's a little bit softer and it's a bit more forgiving when you go over a bump or something. Whereas in, on a bike with slightly firmer suspension, you really feel it shake up your spine, which you don't on this. So great fun on the back roads. The mirrors are decent on this bike. Um, I could do with them being slightly wider. The screen on it is the same one you see on the Rebel. So it just tells you everything you need to know, um, the time, what gear you're in, the miles per hour, your odometer and how much fuel you've got. So all the basics are there. Um, and then this headlight looks really good. Um, There's full beam, yeah, it seems pretty decent. Nice looking. So that's nice. And then other points of styling, this exhaust. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that is absolutely hideous. That is not a nice exhaust. Um, it starts off okay. And then when you get up here, it's just, ugh, it's not nice, is it? So I would change that instantly if I was buying this bike, but I would with any bike really, because they're all too quiet standard. This bike starts from £6,149 in the UK. You've also got some accessories you can add to it on top of that. This has got most of them. So you've got the Adventure Pack, which is an extra £375, which gives you this raised front mud guard. You've got the knuckle guards, and you've also got rally pegs and a cover for the rear suspension. And then you've got the style pack, which this has got as well, which gives you the headlight cowl, um, and it gives you a stripe on the front and the back wheel. It also gives you a side cover here, which this one doesn't seem to have. Um, and you've got this slightly higher seat, which is also brown, which looks nicer. I like this seat. 
So that's £300. And then you've got the travel pack, which this has also got. So you get this rear pannier side bag and you get the mount for it. You also get heated grips, which is fantastic. Um, and I think you also get this little rubber pad on the tank as well. So those are things that you could add to it, which would then make it over £7,000, adding an extra £1,100 and something pounds to it. So that obviously adds to the price, so it's up to you if you want to do that, but some of it I think I would definitely want to do, especially the Adventure Pack, as it looks a lot better. The bike weighs 191 kilos, so it feels pretty light. It's very easy to manoeuvre, so if you struggle manoeuvring bikes around, then you shouldn't struggle with this one, it's very easy. The tank's 12 litres, so it's not a huge tank, but it, you wouldn't really expect it to be with this bike. Um, it looks nice from the side, but when you're on the bike and riding it, it's very narrow, so it's not the best looking fuel tank when you're on top of the bike. Um, and talking about getting on top of the bike, this is what I look like sat on the bike. So I'm six foot one, and that's what I look like on the bike. So it may be perhaps a little bit small looking for me, but it feels fine to ride. You tell me in the comments below if this looks right or whether it looks too small. Um, but yeah, if you are over six foot, you'll be able to ride this bike, no problem. The mud guard on the front, this one's very good. And then you've got a sort of lower one here. But this one is so small that it's not really doing a lot. Um, and you can see on the front here, the radiator and the exhaust are covered in muck from the road. So this could, be do, could do with coming down to here, really. And because of the way it's styled, you can't really see it anyway. So I would like that to be a bit more, um, a bit more coverage there so that you're not having to clean your exhaust and the radiator all the time. So in conclusion then, this bike is very good and all Hondas are very good. It's reliable, it's easy to ride, the clutch is light, um, so it's great for first time riders. But if you want something with a bit more character, then this isn't the bike for you. But if you want a bike that does what it says it does on the tin, then this does it very well. Um, the seat is a little bit firm, so perhaps for longer rides I'd want a more comfortable seat. Uh, but really, this bike would be ideal for rides up to an hour. Um, great for commuting, great for a little bit of off-road riding if you fancy it every now and then. But if you want to do more off-roading, I'd opt for something else. So if you've enjoyed the video, leave a like, comment down below what you think of this bike and subscribe for plenty more bikes and videos coming up.